Welcome to the Folsom Lake College Fall Convocation and the official kickoff for the 1920 academic year. This is an exciting day, not only for those of us here at Folsom Lake College, but across the Los Rios Community College District. And we are lucky to have two trustees with us today. Give a round of applause for Board President John Knight and Trustee Pam Haynes. And to kick things off, I'd like to welcome John Knight to the podium to share greetings on behalf of the board. Thank you, Wendy. On behalf of the entire Los Rios Community College District Board of Trustees, I'm happy to kick off your fall convocation this semester. Um, I would like to take this time to welcome um, all the new staff and faculty members. Uh, we had a reception uh, for new faculty on Tuesday this week, and the numbers that were given to me, there are uh, 84 new faculty um, hired for this year alone out of 4,000 applicants. So I think with that kind of a pool, you probably got a pretty good new group of faculty members. And I hope you all had a wonderful summer. You, you're rested and relaxed and ready to jump into a new school year. My colleagues and I on the Los Rios board understand the extraordinary amount of hard work that goes into preparing for the start of a new year. We are grateful for your commitment. We also know that the past several years have been challenging, exciting, sometimes exhausting, but we have accomplished much and will continue with those efforts. And, and, and the reason I know it's been exhausting and the reason I know the FLC is on track, um, I'm reading uh, a book called the college dropout scandal, and what it talks about is why students are not, you know, completing their dropping out ahead of time. Now, I know you're probably thinking that, you know, most trustees, uh, you know, uh, read dime store novels, but, you know, some of us get into, you know, some of the things that are meaningful in the work we did. And so when I read this book and I see the efforts and the things that you've been doing, you know, you're right on track to make sure that the dropout is not a scandal for Los Rios. You're moving through the, you know, the students are moving the system on the pathway that they've been focused on. Because of your hard work and innovative spirit, students starting classes next week are closer to reaching their academic goals more than ever before and with fewer bar barriers in front of them. Because of your compassion, your dedication, more students are able to access and wrap around services they need to be healthy, safe, and successful. My fellow trustees, we have Pam here today, and I are incredibly proud of all of you and can't wait to see what the year ahead brings. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the best chancellor I've ever worked with, Brian King. Thank you, John. Well, good afternoon, Folsom Lake College. I'm also the only chancellor John has ever worked with, so want to acknowledge our wonderful district team, the uh, outstanding women and men I get to work with. If everyone will stand up in the interest of time, introduce uh, the people I work with whose sole purpose is to help you in your work with your students. Thank you for the, that team being here today. And I want to introduce the three newest members of our team. I'll ask them to come out. Are we in alphabetical order? Come on this way tomorrow. Tamara Armstrong, our new Associate Vice Chancellor for All Things IT. Jake Knapp, our new Associate Vice Chancellor for Human Resources. And Mario Rodriguez with big shoes to fill after the retirement of Teresa Matista. So you may have heard their names, now you can put a face with their name. Let's welcome them and give them a nice warm Folsom Lake welcome. Thank you. So the last couple of years have been very dynamic for Folsom Lake and for all of the Los Rios colleges. When you think about how to describe the work we've done together, it's been challenging. What are some other words that come to mind? It's been frustrating at times. It's been lightning speed, some of the changes that have happened. It's been uniting at some times. Sometimes it's led to conflict 
but without a doubt, it has been fundamentally transformative for the students we serve. So the work is often very complex. The principles I want to share with you today are simple and straightforward. Three fundamental principles that help explain why Folsom Lake College and the Los Rios Colleges are widely regarded as among the best colleges in the best district in the United States of America. Those three ideas are number one, we put you, we put our people first at Los Rios. Number two, because we put our people first, we are able to focus on what is doing, on, focus on doing what is best for our students. And number three, because we put our people first and focus on doing what is best for our students, we are respected and trusted by the many communities we serve. Now when I talk about putting people first, it means we have a very deep commitment to treating everyone fairly and making Los Rios and Folsom Lake the best place to work in the capital region. We have talked a great deal in recent years about being student-centered, and uh, it's important to be student-centered, and I very firmly believe that there is no way to be student-centered without first meeting the needs of our faculty and staff in doing the work that you do on behalf of our students. Do you agree? Our people come first. How many of you have flown in the last year or so? Has anyone flown Virgin American Airlines? Very uh, high customer service airline and their CEO, Richard Branson, talks about how important it is to put people first. That it is the people working uh, on behalf of the organization that are doing magic. And I just want to celebrate the tremendous magic that all of you have made possible for our students in, the, in recent years. We couldn't do it without you. Thanks for the magical efforts you have made on behalf of our students. Let's give yourself a round of applause. Uh, how many of you fly Southwest? I'm a loyal Southwest passenger, and when you get on the plane before you take off, what do they do? They, they give us the safety information, and be honest, how many of you listen carefully to the safety information? How many of you have the headphones on and are not focused on the safety instructions? Okay, that's, that's honest. And uh, what's the first thing they say in case of turbulence, if the masks come down, what are we supposed to do? you put the mask on your own face. Now, I like Southwest because they give you the information, but sometimes they do it in a humorous way. So I've been on the flight where the flight attendant said, if uh, there is turbulence and the mask comes down, if you're traveling with two small children, first of all, what were you thinking? <laughs> and then if you have two small children with you, they say after you put the mask on your face, what should you do next? Pick your favorite, I hear some of you say. The one that sticks with me is when the flight attendant said, if you have two small children, choose the one with the highest earning potential. Put the mask on their face first. So on a serious note, we've encountered turbulence together in the work in recent years, and it is so important to be taking care of each other in those tough times. And if we are attending to our needs first and putting our people first, then we are so much better prepared to be meeting the needs of our students in what can be very challenging times for our students with a lot of change and a lot of turmoil in the world around them. Now, we have a lot of new employees here and throughout the district. Will everyone who has joined FLC within the last year please stand and remain standing? If you are new to FLC within the last year, so exciting to have and remain standing. Hard for me to believe that I'm wrapping up my seventh year as your chancellor. I started in February of 2013. Everyone who has joined FLC or Los Rios since February of 2013 stand up if you've been here seven years or less. So pretty amazing to see how many new, wonderful, energetic, employees we have. Now you can be seated. For those of you who have been here a long time, part of your responsibility is to share with the new employees how committed we are to putting people first. So uh, how many of you were working at a California Community College in, in 2008 in the Great Recession? Very tough times for community colleges all over California and really around the United States. And there were a lot of articles uh, about colleges and districts dealing with their fiscal crisis, the way they did it was by laying off full-time employees. 
Those of you who were here in 2008, tell the new employees how many full-time employees were laid off in the Los Rios district in 2008. Zero. Zero. And that is a number we should all be very proud of, and we have members of our Board of Trustees here together who have modeled that fiscal commitment to our employees. So let's give the Board and our constituent leadership a round of applause for that commitment to our employees. More recently, in the last couple of years, the state has a new funding formula for community colleges. And I know many people have been concerned that the new funding formula might push us off a fiscal cliff, a lot of unknowns in the new funding formula. I don't have time today to get into a deep dive in all the different policy implications of the new funding formula. Just want to share at a high level, we are doing okay in the new funding formula. We're okay. We have not had a huge windfall of new resources, but we have received more money under the new funding formula than we would have under the old funding formula. And uh, in showing the commitment of our board and our constituent leaders and putting our employees first, all eligible employees received a 6% retro check in the last couple of weeks. How many of you had that pleasant news that you were going to have a significant retro check? In addition to the retro check, several employee groups also have an, on, uh, an ongoing salary increase. So that is more evidence of how we put our people first in the Los Rios Community College District. And for newer employees, it's very important to understand the bucket concept that we work together in maximizing revenues and 80% of all new revenues go directly to our people. Back to that, that idea of putting our employees first. So we have a shared interest in maximizing revenues and not in a mercenary way by any stretch. Under the new funding formula, 90% of the dollars we receive are still based on the number of students we serve on access. But there are also ways that there are incentives for us to do things that are good for students that also will result in us receiving additional revenue for the state. For instance, if we enroll uh, and help students complete associate degrees for transfer, ADTs are an area where we can receive additional funding even if our enrollment isn't growing. Serving more historically underrepresented students is another way that we can increase our revenues and is also something great for our students and our community. And then awarding more Pell Grants. The more financial aid we award now under the new funding formula, we can also increase our revenue by helping more students uh, earn a Pell Award. Are any of those things bad? They're all good. So there is alignment between some of the incentives in the new funding formula and building on the work we are doing anyway for our students. And then with those new resources, we're able to continue to invest in our people in sustainable salaries and benefits. Now, we're in good economic times now. It's been uh, more than 10 years now since that last recession in 2008. I don't know when the next recession will start. We're probably overdue for a recession. And uh, the great news to share is that in the intervening 10 years since the last recession, our board used reserves to help smooth through the highs and lows and avoid layoffs of any full-time employees. And I'm, I'm very happy to share with you that we have gradually, thoughtfully, fully funded those reserves. So we're not recession-proof, but we're as recession-resistant as any community college district in California by working together to build up that rainy day fund for when the next recession comes. So that's really good news and something worth celebrating. Another way beyond salaries and benefits that we look out for one another is by recognizing that safety is a very high uh, issue of concern for our faculty and staff. And in my seven years as your chancellor, any employee survey that we've conducted has uh, shown that safety is a top three concern for all of our employees. So soon you will hear from your police captain talking about issues that all of us wish we didn't have to talk about, but I want to also express appreciation for our faculty leaders and other constituent leaders who thought safety was so important. They asked if we could use some of this really precious time during convocation to have a discussion about safety. So we want to do everything we can to be prepared for the unthinkable. And, uh, and, and be able to help one another out and also help our students and, uh, and community if a horrible event happens. And it seems like a day doesn't go by where we don't hear something in the news about these terrible events happening. So 
we put each other first by also being safe. So the first point, we put our people first. The second point, because of the care we put in uh, supporting our people, we are able to focus with a laser focus on doing is what is best for our students. And uh, about three years ago, our district developed a strategic plan and with a focus on equity, the number one goal for our colleges was building pathways for our students to help our students move from high school or the work world to the, their associate's degree or a certificate to help them achieve the goal that they told us was important to them. So I know at Folsom Lake, the focus on equity has undergirded your work in guided pathways and all four of our colleges are uh, very involved in guided pathways and working together to see how we can make sure that all of our students have a, a clearer pathway to achieving their goal. So that equity commitment is reflected in our strategic plan. And a lot of times plans just go on a shelf. And if you ask three years later, have we really done anything that has been impactful for our students? The great news is that we have. And in my 15 years, it's hard to believe I've been either a president, superintendent, or a chancellor in California community colleges for a decade and a half. And many years when we look at outcomes, we celebrate a percentage point or two or three in change. And the great news is that across our four colleges, you and your colleagues and our faculty and staff had the courage to not just talk about difficult uh, subject matter, you made some really important changes. And the one for focus today is the shift from using placement tests as the primary way of determining what math and English class our students take to using high school performance. So when we look at the numbers, they are really overwhelming. So the first uh, data point is enrollment in transfer level writing. So this is first time students, the numbers in uh, 17, 18, before the changes, 5,225 students enrolled in transfer level English writing. Through the courageous decisions that you made here at FLC and across Los Rios, that number jumped in one year from 5,225 to more than 7,200 enrolled in transfer level writing. Now that's a big jump in enrollees. A great question is, did more students complete transfer level writing? The increase in enrollments is massive, 38.5. And let's pause, let's celebrate 38.5% in a world where one or two or three percent per year is normally uh, something, uh, a cause for celebration. Not only did we enroll 38.5 percent more students, first time students in transfer level English writing, here is the huge number, 1,220 more students district wide completed transfer level English. That is incredible. Let's celebrate that success as well. Now let's talk about math and the change in using high school performance for placement instead of relying on a placement test. First year students taking transfer level math, before we made this change in using high school performance, about 1,900 students at our four colleges enrolled in transfer level math in their first year. The jump is even bigger in math than it was for English. This past year, after we used uh, a new way, more than 3,000 students, 3,211, enrolled in transfer level math. Now that is a huge jump. That's, that's a 65% jump in one year. Can, can you believe that? You should give yourselves a round of applause for having the courage to make this change. And in terms of students who completed the transfer level math class, class 749 more students across our district completed transfer level math. So, we will continue to take a deep dive into the data at our colleges. I know you're doing that at Folsom Lake. There is much to learn, the work is not done. But this one single courageous change has already impacted thousands of students in a single year. And we will see the benefit of that change for these students as they complete their degrees much more quickly and achieve their goal in less time. So if we had just had a courageous conversation, we would have, we would have benefited from that but you took courageous action and thousands of students across the Los Rios Community College District are in a better place because you didn't just talk about equity, you made changes that have a positive impact in the lives of our students. So 
Three other opportunities for innovation and, uh, and, and good news in our district, opportunities to innovate here at FLC. First, we'll talk about dual enrollment. Then we'll talk about open educational resources and finally online education, areas where FLC is doing great work. First of all, dual enrollment. How many of you have high school students at home in your house? You know, the parents of high schoolers? How would you like your high schooler at high school graduation to get two degrees, a high school diploma and an associate's degree. Very exciting, the possibility of dual enrollment. Instead of AP classes, and a lot of us as parents have written a lot of checks for AP exams, students taking AP classes that may or may not help them whenever they can continue their four-year education, but dual enrollment has tremendous value. And with the focus on equity, and the realization that here at Folsom Lake, you know that uh, zip code, the color of the skin of our students or their sexual, sexual orientation should not be their destiny. You know that making uh, commitments to things like dual enrollment have uh, a direct impact on advancing equity at Folsom Lake. So dual enrollment is an opportunity to do that. Second opportunity is open educational resources. How many of you are using some open educational resources in a class you teach? Many of you are, and the opportunities are immense. And one area we'll talk about is the zero cost textbook, the zero textbook cost program. If you go on the schedule for Folsom Lake and our other colleges, there's a ZTC logo on classes that now have zero textbook costs. And I want to be very clear that as someone who spent more than 10 years as classroom instructor, a classroom instructor, I understand that the materials that our students use are really important and that many of the textbooks you use, you've carefully chosen, and some of the supporting materials with the traditional textbook are very good for our students and also helpful for our faculty members. So I don't want you to leave with the impression that I think that all of our classes can be or should be zero textbook cost classes. But for those that can be, the benefits to our students are immense. And if you go, uh, if you total just last year to this year, the estimated savings for our students from courses that have converted to zero textbook cost, it's more than $500,000 across our district. And that is a number we should celebrate. $592,228 for courses that no longer have a textbook cost associated with it. Let's celebrate that <laughs> tremendous contribution to our students. Now for uh, classes that are not suited to a ZTC approach, all four of our colleges are also involved in the Libra Text Project. So it's a grant from the Department of Education. UC Davis was the lead institution. All four of our colleges are involved in Libra Text. Libra is one option of open educational curated resources. And what that means is you can look at the class you're teaching and see what's available and whether they, you could pull together adequate resources for the class. Tuesday, I had a happy coincidence when I was at Sacramento City College. I was walking across campus and saw a man and a woman with a t-shirt that said Libra Text and they were carrying a box. So I stopped them and I said, I'm, I'm really interested in Libra Text. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing and who you're with? And they said, who are you? <laughs> and I explained why I was interested in open educational resources. And they opened the box and handed me this book. So this is a Libra text. And it's organic chemistry. How many of you have taken organic chemistry? Uh, if you would go online, as I did, and look at Amazon.com, the new price for an organic chemistry book. Anybody want to guess what a new book is in organic chemistry? somewhere between two and three hundred dollars for a new organic chemistry book. <laughs> Using Libra Text, a faculty member, Diane Bennett at Sacramento City College, has put together the entire uh, OER textbook for organic chemistry. So what is this cost online? It's a zero textbook cost. Or if you want the hard copy, what does this cost to print? Eight to ten dollars. So you think about a book like this, there's a lot of content and a lot of weight to the book, but with the uh, Libra Text option, a student can buy this book in hard copy for ten dollars 
or use the online version for free. So, Diane Bennett, one teacher, one class, one Libra textbook, over five years conservatively, that transition has saved her students more than $200,000 in one class. So I understand that the work is hard in making the transition to open educational resources. And I want to make a pledge to you that I will support you as individual faculty members or as departments if you need resources to help explore making that alternative. We will do everything we can to help you do that because the, the savings involved is immense. And I look forward to hearing stories here at FLC. That was just serendipity that I ran into someone who handed me the book. I know there are success stories like that right here at FLC. Please let me know about those so I can share those success stories. The potential for our students is just amazing to be reducing the cost to students through open educational resources. So dual enrollment, exciting opportunity. Open educational resources, very exciting. The third is online education. And I absolutely want to celebrate the leadership of FLC and online. One example, it's not the only one, but I know Paula Haug and her, co her colleagues in communications were the first and now only so far to offer online public speaking. So thank you for that courageous leadership. We know that more and more students are interested in online courses. And earlier I talked about how our colleges are funded. It's still 90% based on enrollment and 10% on incentives for other uh, outcomes for our students. Online education continues to grow, not just at FLC, not just at Los Rios, but across the state and across the country. So uh, overall, you might be surprised to know that students who are taking only on-ground courses, so the students who are only coming to Folsom Lake physically for all their classes across our district, students taking on-ground only classes, the number is down 5.4%. That's a pretty significant drop just from last year to this year. So the number of students taking only on-ground classes down more than 5%. If our overall enrollment was down 5%, since 90% of our funding is based on how many students we serve, we would not be having the exciting convocation we are today celebrating retro checks and ongoing salary increases because the resources that we have to put our people first would be substantially reduced. The reason that we are not having that discussion is because the number of students who are taking only online courses is way up by more than 12%. So online enrollment continues to grow. And uh, where is Melanie Dixon, our Associate Vice Chancellor? <laughs> Melanie, what did you say? Students are voting with their? Fingers. Students are voting with their fingers as far as classes they're taking online. So more and more students are choosing to take all of their courses online. When you think about the students we're serving online, this again is very much an equity issue. So uh, what would you think in terms of gender? Are more of our online students women or men? How many of you think more men are taking online courses than women? Many more women are taking online courses than men. So more than two thirds of our online only students are female. Uh, another myth that persists is that online courses are uh, of less interest to students of color, and just one data point that underlines the, that that's not true. Almost 24% of, uh, there was an almost 24% increase in Latinx students taking only online courses. So our students of color, women who are working, who may have families and are not able to come physically to our colleges, are flocking to our online courses. So thanks to FLC for the great work you have done in pioneering certain courses. Our inventory of online courses is growing. Knowing that so many of our students are taking classes only online, the next area of emphasis will be developing associate degree for transfer degrees, ATDs, that are available entirely online. And we also are having conversations with public partners in the four-year space so that when our students have completed an associate degree for transfer, they also could complete their baccalaureate online as well if their life doesn't allow them to attend uh, a college on ground. So very much an equity issue in, uh, in moving forward with online. 
very much an area of opportunity and thanks to FLC for your leadership in helping us move forward online. So, wonderful opportunities in dual enrollment, in open educational resources, and in online education. Examples in addition to your great work in uh, placing students using high school uh, success rates, you understand why the community thinks so much of Folsom Lake here in, uh, in, in Folsom and why our colleges are trusted and respected throughout the capital region. And uh, when we think about that community support and the respect and trust of our community, one way that we have seen that is through two bond issues that have transformed all four of our colleges and none more than Folsom Lake. Before our 2002 bond issue and then our 2008 bond issue, uh, some of you have been here from the beginning when we had portable buildings here in Folsom and now because of the trust our community placed in us in uh, approving bond issues, we have this awesome space where we are now and this awesome college. Isn't this an incredible place, an incredible space to work here at Folsom Lake? So those first two bond issues generated about $740 million that have allowed us to build wonderful spaces like this and update uh, older spaces across the district. And uh, we're now towards the end of those first two bond issues and are now in a space where our board members are considering whether it might be time for a third bond issue. And uh, our board will have a study session in September and then we'll determine whether to place an issue on the ballot in the October board meeting, which if approved would go on the March ballot, which is not very far away. The thinking for the March ballot is that it is a, uh, the California presidential primary and very high turnout. So if the board answers some of the tough questions uh, that we'll ask together, what are our needs, what is the right time, and uh, is there support in the community to move forward, then uh, that issue could be on the ballot as soon as March. So wanted to give all of you a heads up that that's under consideration. So if the board decides to take action in October, it won't be a surprise and you will have had some background about the thinking going into it. And I, I don't want to underemphasize that second bullet point. If the board makes this decision, the request to the voters would be to approve 700 million without a tax increase. So this issue would involve no tax increase to the voters. It would be a continuation of the amount of support that we've enjoyed from the community up to this point. So $650 million if we move forward and are successful. How many of you were involved in the facilities master planning for Folsom Lake College? I know a lot of you have been involved in identifying what the needs are moving forward for FLC. All four of our colleges have gone through a facilities master planning process like the one you did here. And you probably would not, will not be surprised to know that when you add up all of the needs of our four colleges, the total number is something like 1.3 billion. So even if we place an issue on the ballot and are successful, we will have to thoughtfully evaluate the priority of needs across the district. And we have a good track record of working together to identify the most pressing capital needs and the timing to meet that. But if we are in a scenario where the bond is approved, all of our colleges will have a major signature project that would be a part of uh, 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 our capital plan moving forward. So that's uh, an example of how our community has supported us through the local bonds. We have also had great support from uh, both our governor and our legislature. And uh, one of the really good days I had this summer was a Sunday where we had a $100 million day among our four colleges. How many of you have had a $100 million day? <laughs> Maybe not personally, but all of you shared that $100 million day because I received the word that Governor Newsom was releasing state bond funds and across the state, our share was $100 million. And a big chunk of that will benefit FLC in the new classroom building that now we can move forward. We were awaiting whether those state matching bond funds would be available and now they are. So let's give a, a round of applause to Governor Newsom and the legislature. So we are in good shape in terms of the capital needs for our colleges and exploring the opportunity to be able to do even more in planning for the next 10, 20, or 30 years for our facility, uh, for, for our facility needs. 
so appreciative of the community support and so thankful for the good work that all of you do that makes our community so supportive. Another way that our community has demonstrated their support for our work is through the Los Rios Promise Program. Hard to believe it's only been about two years ago since the convocation. I shared with you a vision that all of our first-time, full-time students could attend fee-free. It's a mouthful. And also uh, a, a, a goal that seemed very far away only a couple of years ago. Now I'm thrilled to be able to share with you that through the support of the legislature, now all of our first-time students can attend not just the first year, but the first two years at Folsom Lake and all of the Los Rios colleges fee-free. That's great news. So as we work with our uh, partners in the private sector, the dollars we raise can go directly towards other important needs that our students have, including food insecurity, housing, childcare, and other very pressing needs. So we had uh, a wonderful announcement last month that four major partners in the community, Sutter Health was our lead investor, and also Safe Credit Union right here in Folsom, VSP, uh, and also Wells Fargo stepped up and have pledged three quarters of a million dollars to our Promise program. Wonderful news. And that's just the beginning. We are asking other partners in the community how they can help with the Promise program. And a, a large part of my time in the coming weeks will be meeting with people who appreciate the work you do and want to know how they can help give back and support our students in being successful. So uh, from the Promise Program standpoint, want to just make one last uh, point on open educational resources. The $200,000 book, the 500,000 plus ZTC commitment, faculty are making amazing contributions to our Promise Program by reducing costs for our students. So I want to do everything I can to help you explore the options to reduce those costs. That's a wonderful way of supporting our Promise Program for our faculty and staff to, to be aware of opportunities to reduce out-of-pocket costs that our students have to pay. So I just can't tell you how proud I am of your courage in tackling some of these tough issues here at FLC and making changes that are already benefiting our students in overwhelming ways. It's been a great year and uh, the work isn't done. This is just the beginning. We'll continue to look at how we can work together to make even more progress on behalf of our students in the coming months and years. Because of that great work, our students, uh, be because we put you first, we are able to focus on our students and do this great work on their behalf. And because our students are doing so well and the community sees us, they support our work in a variety of very important ways. So I encourage you to let me know what I can do to help you continue this great progress. It's going to be a great year, a great start to the new semester. And with that, I thank you for being generous in your time and letting me spend some time with you today and, uh, and look forward to seeing you in, uh, in throughout the semester and hearing what I can do to help you continue to serve our students so well. Thank you very much for your time today.